Students, teachers, and administrators are all expected to follow a code of ethics. These guiding principles promote academic achievement and integrity, which is protective of free investigation and serves the educational missions of schools and universities. For many years, these standards of professional conduct gave clear direction to promote the ethical behavior of its members. Now, we are 20 years into the digital age, and new technologies are changing the educational landscape at an incredible rate. Are our acceptable use policies addressing rules for the proper use of these new information technologies? Several ethical codes dealing with technology use exist and many schools have adopted acceptable use policies that cover the use of new technological tools. Teachers, students, and parents need to know and understand these codes. For children, the major issues surrounding technology ethics can be categorized into three areas. Privacy, property, and appropriate use. The topics for examination include privacy protection, freedom of information, intellectual property, cyber crimes, harassment, stalking, and bullying, the digital divide, and social aspects of participating in information environments. Teachers need to develop learning objectives and activities that specifically address technology ethics. Proper use needs to be taught at the same time that other computer skills are taught. Students' understanding of ethical concepts need to be assessed. Technology use privileges, especially those involved in online use, should not be given to students until the assessments show that a student knows and can apply ethical standards and school policies. Even very young children can quickly identify whether the behaviors in these examples are right or wrong. A boy finds a magazine with sexually explicit photographs and brings it to school. He shows its contents to the others in class who become upset. A student steals a set of keys and uses them to gain access to the school office where she changes her grades and views the grades of other students. A student locates a story, recopies it in his own handwriting, and submits it to the teacher as his own work. Or a student steals a book from a local store. She says the only reason she stole it was that she didn't have enough money to purchase it. When students start using technology, especially information technologies that consist of computers and computer networks, they start operating in a new world, a virtual world. Suddenly, behaviors may not be as easily judged to be right or wrong. What would your students' responses be to these given situations? A girl downloads a sexually explicit picture from a site on the internet on a computer in the school library. Her classmates can easily view the computer screen. A student finds the teacher's password to the school's information system and uses it to change his grades and view the grades of other students. A student uses the copy and paste command to place large parts of an electronic encyclopedia article into an assigned paper. She turns the paper in as her own work. Or a student makes a copy of a software program borrowed from another student to use on his computer at home. Our new technological capabilities also may require new ethical considerations. The ability to send unsolicited commercial messages to millions of internet email users known as spamming was not possible before there was email or the internet. Does the fact that the financial burden of unsolicited advertisements now fall on the recipient rather than the sender create need for new rules? Digital photography has made the manipulation of images undetectable, an impossible feat with chemical photography. What obligations do communicators have to present an undocted photograph even if its message may not be as powerful as the one that has been digitally enhanced? Prior to the internet, minors face physical barriers of access to sexually explicit materials. What safeguards do schools, libraries, and parents need to take to keep children from freely accessing inappropriate materials? Which will serve our children better in the long run? Software filtering devices or instruction and practices in making good judgments? Intellectual property in digital format can now be duplicated with incredible ease. Do we need clear definitions of property? 
Can an item that is taken without authorization, but leaves the original in place, still be considered stolen? One of the most significant reasons that computer ethics deserves special attention is because of our rather human ability to view one's actions in the intangible, virtual world of information technologies as being less serious than one's actions in the real world. Most of us, adults or children, would never contemplate walking into a computer store and shoplifting a computer program. Yet, software piracy, the illegal duplication of computer programs, costs the computer businesses billions of dollars every year. Most of us would never pick a lock, but guessing passwords to gain access to unauthorized information is a common activity. Information technology misuse by many people, especially the young, is viewed as low risk, game-like challenge. Electronic fingerprints, footsteps, and other evidence of digital impropriety have historically been less detectable than physical evidence. There is a physical risk when breaking into a real office that does not exist when hacking into a computer database from one's living room or den. Illegally copying a book is costly and time-consuming, but illegally copying a computer program can be done in seconds at a very small expense. The viewed pornography on a website seems to disappear as soon as the browser is closed. Ethical Codes Many organizations and individuals have written lists of ethical standards for technology use. One of the most widely used and easily understood sets of computer use principles comes from the Computer Ethics Institute. Here are the Ten Commandments of Computer Ethics by the Computer Ethics Institute. Thou shalt not use a computer to harm other people. Thou shalt not interfere with other people's computer work. Thou shalt not snoop around in other people's computer files. Thou shalt not use a computer to steal. Thou shalt not use a computer to bear false witness. Thou shalt not copy or use proprietary software for which you have not paid. Thou shalt not use other people's computer resources without authorization or proper compensation. Thou shalt not appropriate other people's intellectual output. Thou shalt think about the social consequences of the program you are writing or the system you are designing. Thou shalt always use a computer in ways that ensure consideration and respect for your fellow humans. A variety of guides should be made available to staff and students, and one should either be adopted or an original set of guidelines written. While an entire school or district may wish to use a single set of guidelines, each classroom teacher needs to understand, teach, and model the guidelines. Simply, easily remembered for children are probably the best, Doug Johnson's three P's of technology ethics. Privacy, I will protect my privacy and respect the privacy of others. Property, I will protect my property and respect the property of others. Appropriate use, I will use technology in constructive ways and in ways which do not break the rules of my family, church, school, or government. Major areas of concern. The scope of information technology ethics is very broad. For the purposes of this short guide, we will be looking only at some common cases where younger children will need to make ethical choices or have the unethical actions of others affect them. I have categorized the issues under the major headings of privacy, property, and appropriate use. These cases and other like them should be used to foster classroom discussion.